Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is round five here at GP Providence. I'm Gabby Sports, joined today by Luis Scott Vargas. And our main match today is going to be Julian Wilds versus Seth Manfield. You see Julian on the left, currently sitting at 4 0, playing at white's blue flash. It looks like there might be uh, uh, some red splashing here. And uh, Seth, on the other hand, is playing Grixis Control, sitting at 4 0. These might not be the correct names. Yeah, we're, we're we will get those updated. It. The game is off to a pretty slow start. Just a couple lands for each player. Looks like a tune with Ether for Julian, providing some energy and also another land. So we have some sweet decks here. Uh, Ju Julian is on four color energy, is what it looks like, actually. Uh, and Seth is, is on black green delirium. So <laughs> Julian's deck has. Long Tusk Cub, Reflector Mage, and Whirler Virtuoso siding, fighting right. side by <laughs> side. So these Ether Hubs that you see uh, are, are going to be really crucial in, in him being able to cast all his spells and attune with Ether, also a big part of that. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about what his, uh, Julian's deck is trying to do? This is not something that we've seen a, a lot of. It basically has a lot of the good energy cards like Voltaic Brawler, Long Tusk Cub, Servant of the Conduit, and Whirler Virtuoso paired with just powerful cards like Woodland Wanderer, the... 2-2 two, two that gets a plus plus one for each color of mana you play it with. So being a four-color deck, uh, Julian gets to take advantage of that, as well as Reflector Mage and uh, Verger's Gear Hulk and Tireless Trackers, just high-quality cards, uh, as well as Tamiya Field Research. It's basically just a four-color good stuff deck with like a minor energy theme. So pretty sweet stuff, whereas Seth, on the other hand, is his green-black Delirium deck is a much more controlling version. We're, you know, we're not seeing Blossoming Defense in this deck. We're seeing Pilgrim's Eye and Emrakul, the Promised End, multiple copies of Ishkana. So this is a kind of a control deck against a, a, a mid-range deck, and uh, it's pretty interesting to see how this plays out. You want to hear a good story about uh, Julian Wilde's deck list? Uh, all right, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so he started with an ether, uh, an Etherworks list, and then he kind of just took a look at that and said, you know what, I love Tameo, so I want Tameo in my deck. And then he continued looking at the list, and he said, you know what, we could also just have a lot more creatures. And, and that is where this came from. <laughs> so it's Teamer Etherworks plus Tameo minus the Etherworks. Yep. All right, well, the, <laughs> I guess that works. Ooh. So it looks like a Spell Quiller coming down. And Spell Quiller is attempting to pick up a card in its second mode, which is just... Two three flash Just flyer, ambush. yeah. Flying flying ambusher. It's like a flying ambush viper, but a high quality Which card is much instead. Better. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I knew. <laughs> I, obviously, I knew that was coming. <laughs> it does manage to ambush that pilgrim's eye. It's poor eye. You, you, you only you, knew that was coming because that, that was the right place to go. All right. <laughs> the pilgrim's eye should have seen that coming, but it clearly didn't. It just straight ran into that spell queller. And we've seen that either hub tap multiple times for colored mana. We'll, we'll see how many times it gets used, but I suspect it's going to be uh, many, many times over the course of this game. Said so Manfield on the other side, our world champion. He's also the PT Shadows over Instagram and Phage Reforged top eight competitor. He has nine GP top eights to his name, most recently in Sydney. Ooh, that Pilgrim's Eye did not die for naught, though. Uh, dead weight uh, is going to be able to finish off the, the spell caller now, thanks to the one damage from Pilgrim's <laughs> Eye. Is dead weight a card that you can anticipate to see in, in decks like this? It doesn't seem like it takes down some of the creatures in the format. It, it seems pretty good against vehicles, but... It, it's not a very commonly played card, but Seth's playing in order to enable Delirium just as a random enchantment. He's just got one copy of dead weight and right. one in the sideboard. It does a good job of killing Toolcraft Exemplar and can shrink uh, Inventor's Apprentice, so it, it's a fine card. Yeah, I guess the veteran motor is real good, too. Tireless Tracker coming down for Julian, and uh, an island gets to provide an extra clue. And this is early enough in the tournament that Seth's still trying to figure out what Julian is playing because it's unlikely that Seth knew what was going on, and now he's seen Spell Queller, Tireless Tracker, and Spire Bluff Canal, so... If, if I were Seth, I would be quite confused uh, uh, over what Julian was trying to do. And Seth's gonna just going to have to learn as he, you know, as the game progresses. Look, you don't, you don't, it's not every day that you play against four-color Tamiyo aggro. Yeah, if Seth could see the overlay, he would still be quite confused. <laughs> <laughs> like grapple from the past from Seth Manfield. And that actually, he does actually have Delirium now. So this, like, this Ishkana is going to be a lot more threatening than she would be otherwise. Ishkana coming down 
with extra spiders as well. Let's see what uh, Julian can follow up with. Tireless Tracker can't really attack through this uh, army of spiders. Now, even if Julian has another land to make another clue to make Tireless Tracker a 5 4, Seth's going to just triple block with two spiders and the Ishkanon you know, end up be, be profiting. On the other hand, Julian just keeps gaining clues here. So I think he meant to put a two on that clue, not the energy counter. Uh, so he's got a card draw engine, and Julian's deck is powerful enough to eventually defeat an Ishkanon, even if. Uh, even if Seth is, isn't is really pressuring him very much. Yeah, I think Julian just noticed uh, about the energy. So now he's actually, so he's fixed that, that's fixed. Um, two clues and more energy this time around. The unfortunate part for Julian though is that Seth does eventually get to Emrakul him. Seth has uh, four copies of Traverse the Ovenwald and then an Emrakul the Promised End and it's pretty hard to recover from getting hit by Emrakul. What do you think of these uh, Black Green Delirium decks? You know. At the last Pro Tour, something that we saw a lot is people trying to turbo out Emrakul's by fueling Delirium. Whereas, you know, at this Pro Tour, we saw a lot of people trying to cheat out Emrakul, if you may, by Aetherworks um, Marvel. So how do you think these Blackling Delirium decks are positioned nowadays? It, it, it's funny because there's more of a range now. It used to be that Blackling Delirium was a, the thing you just said. Turbo Emrakul, yep. kind of slow. Like, actually, what Seth's playing right now. Mm -hmm. But we saw a kind of a new breed of Black Green Delirium decks ranging from the aggressive playing l more one drops and Blossoming Defense and Smuggler's Copter to the mid range, which still plays Copter, but maybe more gear hooks mm -hmm. to uh, where Seth is, which is just full on control. This is just control Black Green Delirium. And you never know when your opponent plays Sis and Quagmire which one you're up against, and they all have different strengths and weaknesses. All right, so Kalita's coming down for Seth. Ooh, and we're going to see another Sparkweller ambush. Not today, Kalidas. This one may be a little more effective than the last one. It's Kalidas is slightly more threatening than Pilgrim's Eye. But now that, now that Julian has seen Pilgrim's Eye, Deadweight, Vessel of Nascency, you, you got to assume that Seth on the more controlling Delirium build, which does put you on a more of a clock in terms of finishing the game. Like, Julian, had he been playing against one of the more mid-range or lower curve decks, he'd be feeling pretty good right now. He's got a, a stable board, strong extra cards off Tireless Tracker once he starts cracking those clues. Mm -hmm. Against Seth, Seth's already at Artifact, Creature, Enchantment, Sorcery, Instant, five types for Emrakul. It's not hard to get a, f a land in there. Seth's potentially two turns away from casting Emrakul. And at that point, J Julian can imagine that a lot of his cards are going to hit the graveyard. All right, so... Uh Julian's starting to see what's within those clues, starting to draw more cards. He's found a land off the top, which provides him yet another clue. This particular matchup is one where I'd prefer to be on the Black Green Delirium side, or the controlling Black Green Delirium side, rather than the more aggressive Black Green Delirium Why is decks. that? Uh, Julian has a lot of ways to stop offense. Uh, Reflector Mages and Whirler Virtuosos are, are just good at stopping beatdown, less good at, at, at stopping Emrakul. So, in this particular matchup, I like Seth's choice of the more uh, defensive Delirium deck, whereas against something like Etherworks Marvel, you'd much rather be on the aggressive de Delirium deck because it's just faster and pressures your opponent more. So it looks like Julian's going to be attacking with a Tireless Tracker. And it's going to follow up the turn. It looks like a Whirler Virtuoso. All right, now we have the full four colors. <laughs> Getting huh? a little bit more energy, and we're going to have a pass back to Seth. Here you see Verler Virtuoso on the right. Typically a limited card. We haven't seen this have much of an impact in Constructed. However, it's a 2-3. Three. You pay three energy, you get a 1-1 one, one colorless softer artifact creature with flying. And you can activate this at any time. A and of note, this is a energy sink that requires no mana. So if Julian stacks up six or nine energy can immediately make two or three Thopters at any point in time with the Whirler Virtuoso, whereas some of the other energy cards require mana to use. Or they require attacking or have s other forms of restrictions on them as well. Yeah, like Voltaic Brawler, for example. Mm -hmm. All right, so Wishkna getting aggressive. And Seth, Seth is, is trying to close out this game. He is attacking with Ishkana every turn here, despite getting attacked back for more damage. So... I'm curious to see what his game plan is here because generally you would think that the black green delirium control deck would not want to trade three damage for four damage or three damage for five damage. So presumably Seth has some follow-up here that, that would help 
make that more uh, of a cohesive plan. Seth holding his hands close to his chest. We don't have much of a clue of what he has yet. I would say he plays his cards close to the vest, but he, he's not actually, but he's not actually currently wearing a, wearing a vest. You know, if you join coverage, he would get a vest. Coverage, I think, uh, each person gets two what? or three vests at the very least. Why aren't you wearing a vest? Tomorrow. I have a vest for tomorrow. All right. It's for Sunday. It's my Sunday vest. <laughs> so the saying goes, right? Dressing in your yeah, Sunday vest? Dressing in your Sunday vest. <laughs> That kind of V. Julian Wilds is a New Englander, actually. He's friends with uh, Ting Gwen. Playing four color Tamio aggro. So he still has a grip full of cards and two clues that he hasn't cracked yet. Three clues now. <laughs> Inspiring Vantage is not a card I expect to see next to Forest and Island very often in this tournament, but I like what's going on here. I think that pushing the mana base of standard for just to include a lot of powerful cards is pretty cool because a tune with Ether, Servant of the Conduit, and Ether Hub all really do enable just basically picking the best of these four colors and just putting those cards together, even if the deck doesn't have that cohesive of a theme besides a light energy theme. Just combining great cards is often going to be good in a mid range format. It's kind of tough though because, especially with the ether hubs, and if you're not creating that much more energy, sometimes you just get stuck with a colorless land. So it does let you play four colors for something like this, but you can also have a really hard time casting all your colors and have some cards stranded in your hand. Looks like these creatures are going to be attacking, and the murder is going to take down. Oh, we're going to see a bit of an ambush here. Yeah, if that Kalidus comes into play before blocks, then this could this could end up turning out poorly for Julian, though I believe he's got a Harness Lightning waiting in the wings here to, to be used. So uh, the murder does resolve. The Spell Queller does die. Kalidus comes back to the battlefield. Looks like Seth is now choosing to go to blocks, and uh, Kalidus looking to do some ambushing here. So Julian deciding whether he wants to kill Kalitas before blockers or not. And one advantage of doing that is basically that Seth doesn't get a free block. The disadvantage is if Seth doesn't know that Kalitas is dying, then Seth might make blocks that are more profitable for Julian. But on balance, I think that Julian made the right decision here. Mm -hmm. And so that Kalitas does go down. And now we're moving to blocks. Seth triple blocking all the spiders to the Whirler Virtuoso in an attempt to take it down. Assigning one, two, three. You know what's yep. re really funny about these spiders is it's one, twos are, are just notoriously difficult to kill in combat. Yes. <laughs> when you triple or quad block with one, twos, like a five, five takes out two of them. You, you would think these spiders would be easier to squash, but they really aren't. Yeah, it seemed that fight was somewhat reminiscent of a Whirler Virtuoso trying to smack a bunch of spiders and actually only got one and then ran away. Yeah, he's not a Virtuoso at spider killing, maybe at making thopters, but... <laughs> Well, a second Virtuoso, let's see uh, if he is any better at dealing with these spiders. And a Long Tusk Cub coming down for Julian. Out of cards, too, but he does have those three clues that he'll be able to crack eventually. All right, we're going to see if we get the energy counter moved on screen here since uh, Julian, uh, he's got enough permanence now that the energy counter's kind of you know, drifted off to the left there. Long Tusk Cub, another uh, pretty good way to use uh, energy without actually having to spend mana on it. And it's funny because the Cub itself doesn't generate energy unless it gets a hit in, but frequently in this deck you'll play it with access to like four or six energy and be able to uh, get a hit in because it threatens to attack as a 4-4 four, four or a 5-5. Five, five. All right, so three mana Liliana, the last hope, coming down for Seth. Now he's deciding what he wants to do. Looks like he might be ticking down. He reveals a Grim Flayer and another Ishkana. Has a choice of what he wants to get back, and it looks like he might be going for that Grim Flayer. Yeah, it's tempting to just be able to get a card you can cast this turn, since Seth, Seth, you know, has been stuck on five lands for quite some time here, mm -hmm. and he's playing a deck that 
really does want to have more lands. He, he looks like he just hit his six. So the Grim Flare does come down and uh, continuing to try to stabilize this board and also making his land drops again. So continuing to try to catch up with William, Julian. <laughs> tireless tracker really putting in some work because one of the things about this game is that if the game stalls out for too long that tireless tracker is going to draw julian three or four extra cards and that's it already has how many it, it, it's already drawn two two extra cards thanks to the clue the, the two plus plus one counters on it mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's our way to track it very easily and uh w w you know we're going to see two or three more clues being created here which that just means that if seth's trying to grind this game out julian's just gonna be a bunch of cards ahead which does mean that eventually Seth's going to have to find Emrakul because you could be six, six, seven cards ahead and Emrakul can still just decimate your board. You no, know, this is one of the reasons why a lot of times a tireless tracker comes down and it just dies immediately. So Julian deciding, it seems like he... Yeah, taking a look at how much energy he has would uh, help us a bit here. But it looks like that cub might be getting in there. Interestingly enough, too, it looks like as the game progresses, you know, Seth has continued to fall a little behind, and uh, Julian continues to be aggressive here. It looks like only the cub is getting in and not the tireless tracker. At this point, Seth has enough blockers that Tireless Tracker would potentially die in combat, and it is Julian's card draw mach machine here, so I think it makes sense to hold it back. Uh, Cub does threaten to trade for something, though Seth gets to, to siphon away a bunch of energy. All right, now we know. So six energy. This is uh, quite a bit of counters. So Julian can use four energy and take down Grimflare or use six energy and take down Ishkana. What Seth has to worry about is something like potentially harnessed lightning. What would that do? That would take out, could take out like Ishkana. Yeah, that would still not be great for, for Julian. So I, I suspect the Cub is mostly just going to trade here. Yeah, so uh, Ishkana and two spiders. Looks like the Grim Flayer is not getting into the blocking today. Yeah, assigning that uh, Ishkana first. And so the Cub gets a trade with Ishkana, and now Seth is just left with two spiders in the Grim Flyer. That Cub acted as a, <laughs> a Harness Lightning, traded six energy in a card for, for Ishkana there. So he's going to follow up with another Cub, Magic though. With significantly less energy this time, it's looking quite less threatening. Well, cats sleep a lot, so it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me. That Not too surprising. What about a noxious gear hulk, though? Taking down the tireless tracker, finally. Uh, that, that's a pretty good step forward for Seth. It also gains quite a bit of life. Yeah, gaining Seth not only life, removing Julian's biggest creature and making it so Julian's going to draw fewer cards in the future. This also means that if the noxious gear hulk dies, Liliana, the last hope, can, can bring it back and you know for another go round. So that was a pretty big play for Seth. counter just removed. It is, uh, was the counters on Tireless Tracker. No, needed no longer. The Gear Hulk cycle being uh, pretty powerful and impactful. Uh, we saw Torrential Gear Hulk you know, win the, the, the tournament last weekend in the Pro Tour and uh, actually played the Mirror in the finals. I've seen some Cataclysmic Gear Hulks floating here and there and definitely a lot of Virgis Gear Hulks and Noxious Gear Hulks. What do you think is the best Gear Hulk? I think Torrential is probably going to end up being the best long term because as more instants gets printed, it gets better and better. Though Verger's Gear Hulk might be the best just on raw power level. Mm -hmm. Poor combustible Gear Hulk. <laughs> Magic players, may I please have Looks like Julian team found team another Martinez, cub off the top. Strickland from the 1030 Team Seal event. Please go to the on demand stage. Long Tusk Cub is not a card that stacks particularly well, though, is, is, especially in a situation like this where they're not getting through. Because Julian had to use a lot of his energy in order to have the Cub take down Ishkana. Looks like he's going to be cracking another clue. He just finds a land off the top, though. Wild Wonder? 
Oh uh, yeah, the Woodland Wonder. Woodland Wonder is going to be a six six here, which is not a not a common sight, but four mana six six trample vigilance. That that is a real card. Kind of felt like Woodland Wonder never got his time to shine. I think it was hard to find the combination of a deck that would want it and, and a deck that could cast it. Because four color decks don't always want just random. This is essentially like French Vanilla, right? Four mana, six, six. Mm -hmm. And decks that would want a four mana, six, six frequently are like two colors, in which case it would only be a four, four, so it doesn't quite get there. Well, it's looking pretty good in four color Tamiyo Agro. <laughs> Yeah, it is not looking bad here, though. That Noxious Gear Hulk it really is, is putting a damper on any of Julian's beatdown plans because it gains Seth four life. Also, killed the Tireless Tracker, and now if it dies, Liliana can bring it back. It also starts to threaten Julian's life total. All right, so the Noxious Gear Hulk getting in there. It has Menace, so if Julian wants to try to take this down, there's going to have to be multiple blocks. And I don't even think Seth's unhappy if the Gear Hulk does die. Yeah, you can see the strength of a card like Liliana potentially threatening to get that back. And if it comes back, kills another creature, gains more life, so. So it did a non-lethal amount to the Wanderer, which means that Seth presumably has a, a follow-up that can that can kill kill the Wanderer. Yeah, so he's playing a Kalidas, ticking up Liliana. That's an easy way to take down that creature. And it also gives uh, Seth an extra zombie. Yeah, that, that was a nice way to get a little bit of value post combat. Yeah, that worked out pretty well for Seth. He's just a, he's able to just add a ton of stuff to his board, and now he's just kind of crushing Julian on board. Yep, and uh, that's gonna do it for game one. Seth Manfield takes down the first game, round five here at GB Providence. Seth turned the corner pretty quickly with that Noxious Gear Hook. He went from being somewhat on the defensive, and you know getting attacked every turn for the last three turns to all of a sudden it didn't even become close as to who was uh, ahead in the race. Like, Noxious Gearhook just completely turned mm -hmm. the game around. Seth was pretty aggressive up until that point, too, though. We saw Ishkanaz getting in there and, you know, trading less damage than it was against a tireless tracker. Yeah, and it, part of the reason that Seth uh, likely was attacking with Ishkanaz like that is that he just knew Gearhook was coming down on turn six or seven because Seth was stuck on five lands for quite some time. In the meantime, let's take a peek over and see what's going on between Pedro Carvalho and Andreas Gans. Uh, so Pedro is paying Marty tokens. We have uh, a deck tech with him that we will be showing in between the rounds. And uh, Andreas is playing black red aggro. It looks like a bit of a mirror match, though uh, Pedro has a more of a token theme going on. There you see Servo Exhibition in the graveyard is uh, part of that plan. And we have the rare sight of a toolcraft exemplar that has first strike. And that card's often a 3 2 on turn two. Doesn't very often have first strike uh, when it's relevant, but that is kind of forcing a potential double block here because Pedro has the three artifacts in order to give it first strike. It does that. Yep. So uh, it looks like the smuggler's copter might be the thing that goes down here. And the PNLR will be able to finish off that uh, toolcraft exemplar. Assuming that nothing goes wrong in combat, of course. And one reason that uh, Pedro might want to kill Pia instead of Smuggler's Copter is leaving the opponent with multiple vehicles and no ways to crew them it, it is a, an effective strategy. So if Pedro kills Pia and Alara and then finds a way to kill that Thopter token that uh, piloted the Smuggler's Copter, Andreas could just have two, two Smuggler's Copters in play and no way to, to make them active. So Andreas is looting right now with the Smuggler's Copter, decided to discard an unlicensed disintegration. And yeah, you're, he's going with the line that you mentioned. So PNLR goes down. We did see that Andreas has a, a backup PNLR, which not only uh, comes in by itself, it also she also brings another Thopter. So it looks like the plan of leaving him without any creatures to crew is not really going to work out too well here. All right, PNLR coming down. Bringing another copter with her, too. Now these copters are ready to hit the skies. And both players are relatively high life totals, so really whoever gets like the first big hit in could just be ahead in this race. And Andreas has an opportunity here to, to send for six, potentially, but he may not, not be doing that just out of respect for Reckless Bushwhacker because Pedro's playing a deck where what if Pedro goes 
Lynn, Vendor's Apprentice, Servo Exhibition, Reckless Bushwhacker, Attack for a Million. Mm -hmm. uh, Andreas, I think, ha has some fear of that. It's hard to know, too, because you don't know if your opponent is really on a tokens plan until you see it happen, although Servo Exhibition is a little bit of a tell. It can't just come and get you. And th that, that's the sort of thing that you need to do to, to succeed at the, the GP level is look at a deck like Pedro Carvalho's. You're playing against him. You don't know what he's playing exactly, his exact build. But then you spot that Servo Exhibition, and you're like, all right, well, the only reason to play Servo Exhibition in this format is if you're playing Reckless Bushwhacker. Sure. And by virtue of me seeing that one card, I just gain a ton of information about your deck list and your strategy. I should play around outnumber now. You know, I, I should expect to maybe take six damage out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And th those kind of contextual clues really help you plan out your game when you're dealing with imperfect information. Andreas did discard that unlicensed the Grinch disintegration earlier. Um, especially considering that he has an artifact in play. Is there a reason you think he would have discarded that card? It seems very powerful in his deck. Uh, one, one main reason is that he's playing against a deck with just mostly just cheap small creatures and paying three mana to kill any of the creatures Pedro has in play is just not that effective. So the, the tokens deck just does not tend to play cards like Fleet Wheel Cruiser or, you know, Depala, like slightly bigger creatures. So you end up in a spot where uh, you don't want to spend three mana to kill really anything your opponent has. Ooh, and Weaver of Lightning coming down for Andreas, and this is the kind of card that can shut down a, st a strategy like tokens. We're going to bring you updates on what happens in this match, but our main match is going, so we should head back and uh, see what, how they're doing. We're back here with Julian Wilde and Seth Manfield. Uh, Seth was able to take down the first game, and uh, we've come right in time to take a look at Julian's hand. It looks like a Transgress the Mind is going to be revealing what Julian has available to him. Tireless Tracker, another Woodland Wanderer, um, Spell Queller, and a Tamiyo. It looks like the Long Tusk Cup is not an option. Well, not only is it not an option, but it's also in, in play. Which is good for Julian. That's actually one of the better things he has going on, is that he's going to get to hit with Long Tusk Cup. He's mm -hmm. going to get to generate energy. Because right now, he's missing not only a third land to play Tireless Tracker or Spell Queller, in order to play Queller, it has to be a white land. If he's got a Harness Lightning, he just can't cast. He's on blue and green mana. Mm -hmm. So turns out playing four colors does have somewhat of a drawback. So Seth continuing to decide how he wants to sculpt the rest of this game. And the fact that Julian's missing lands actually makes this somewhat more difficult mm -hmm. because if you knew Julian was drawing an untapped white source, you might t just take Spell Queller because that'll disrupt your next turn. But it is the safest to take Tireless Tracker because that is the most easy to cast card. If Julian draws any untapped land, he could just yeah. cast it. And he is going to go for that. So down goes a Tireless Tracker. This does leave with Julian with a Spell Queller in hand, though no white mana to cast it yet. Long Tusk Cub gets to get in, provide two energy, and he's missed his land drop. All right, so Seth has a real opportunity here because even though that cub is growing every turn, essentially because those energy can just feed it and it gets gigantic. Seth is able to deploy his cards here without really fear of Julian doing anything. He knows every card in Julian's hand but one, and he can narrow that one card down to not a land. Three mana for Seth. Liliana. Liliana gets to target that cub. The cub goes, does, gets to continue to grow. Yeah, the Liliana will make it a 0-1, but then it can, uh, of course, eat those two energy sitting around, become a 1-3, or a 1-2, rather, and then just attack and get get two more energy. Oh, wow. That's a big draw step for Julian. He's drawn an inspiring vantage, and it's an untapped white source, too. That spell caller not looking to do any too much ambushing, though, since Seth does know that it's there. Seth might be in a position where he only has sorceries to play, in which case the, the Queller is going to make this turn pretty difficult. But if Seth has an instant here, this is going to go quite well for Seth, because... Julian is in a spot where it's it's difficult and it's very costly for him to just keep mana up every turn and not doing anything. You think he just runs it out? There's a chance. I mean, when your opponent knows about Spell Queller and passes with all their mana up, it's just not that likely they're going to successfully hit with it. So Liliana continues to take up. Targeting the Long Tusk Cub. Well, it looked like Seth was thinking about it and he may have he may have changed his mind. Yeah. But I, I assume that's what he's going to want to do. 
Yeah, so he is going to go ahead and do that. All right, so Spell Queller, yeah, it looks like he was passing the turn, so Spell Queller does just come in. No value, just a 2-3 flyer, but uh, we'll be able to pressure this Liliana now. Julian drew a land, so Julian, actually, if you want, you can slam Tamiyo, plus Tamiyo on both of his creatures, and just attack with both creatures, and at least one of them will survive, and he'll draw an extra card. Yes, that is exactly what he's doing. So taking up Tamiyo, targeting both of his creatures. Magic Bash. Standard plus, you're appearing. Looks like they're both coming at Liliana. Now by the blue gathering point flag. Again, Magic players need standard plus. All right, let's see what you're stuff appearing. can follow Round up with. Oh, he doesn't even have a removal it. spell. He just has a hissing wow. quagmire. So hissing quagmire getting in front of this, but this feels bad, especially because he's missing land. Like, ay. <laughs> yeah, because Julian's going to get to draw two cards off Tamiyo. Seth's going to lose his land. Liliana's going to take a couple damage. This works out really well for Julian. Yeah, it did. So that Cub is going to trade with a hissing quagmire. He gets to draw lands, and now Seth is also down a land. <laughs> Seth just drew an Ishkana, which he n now can't now cast. Now can't cast. <laughs> Granted, she wouldn't have had Delirium, but Liliana could have potentially spiked Delirium, depending on uh, how things went. All right, Mind Rack Demon. Let's see if Delirium is hit. Looks like yeah, it looks instant sorcery land creature. creature. Yeah. It's always a little bit of a liability, Mind Rack Demon. You're not sure if it's... Uh, I mean, he's very good at powering Delirium himself. And all... Seth needed to hit two types out of four, four flips, which is not unreasonable. Mindwreck Demon now will be able to also block the Spell Queller if it needs to. Yeah. Between Mindwreck Demon and Liliana, I think that Spell Queller is probably staying home. All right, so uh, Julian is ticking up, and this time he's targeting both the Spell Queller and the Mindwreck Demon. Tamiyo is, is a great card. She's, she's really powerful. Even if Seth wants to attack Tamiyo here, Mindwreck Demon will draw Julian a card. So I think Julian is not very afraid to tap out given those circumstances. Looks like Woodland Wonder coming down. Only tapping for three colors this time, unfortunately. Not as big as he could be in this deck. Yeah, I guess the double forest makes that a little tough. a pass back to Seth, and Seth still with a lot of cards in hand, but still choked on mana. And Seth has Delirium, so if, if he had a fifth land, there's a pretty good chance he would want to slam Mishkana, but it, I think he may have to Pilgrim's Eye to get his fifth land. I don't think he, he has a, a fifth land in his hand, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out momentarily here. Looks like that Mindrack Demon is getting aggressive. Liliana ticks up, targeting the spell caller, and then the Mindrack Demon also attacks Tamiyo. So this does drop Tamiyo down to two, and Pilgrim's Eye now coming back down for Seth. This will provide him a uh, swamp. So Seth representing Grasp of Darkness. Pretty good chance he doesn't have it given how he played two turns earlier and the fact that he uh, milled two Grasps with Mindrack Demon. Yeah, tamio has been great this game. She's drawn Julian three cards so far. Uh, could pro is probably going to draw him two more cards this turn. If he pluses Tamiyo... Uh, well, if he, I guess if he pluses Tamiyo on Wood the Wonder, he could draw an extra card and then plus on Mind Rack Demon to draw a card when it attacks. And even if Tamiyo dies at this point, she saved eight damage and drew five cards. All right, so it looks like Tamiyo continues to tick up. First target is a Woodland Wanderer. Second target is a Pilgrim's Eye. All right, <laughs> <laughs> Woodland Wanderer just encroaching. Looks like uh, going to be trying to chuck that, that Hedron at Liliana. Let's see how successful it is. And even if the Pilgrim's Eye uh, chumps, that means Julian draws a card, though. If it jumps, Liliana does live. All right, so uh, Seth deciding he'd rather not let uh, Julian draw more cards so that Liliana is dead. The Pilgrim's Eye gets to see another day. And uh, now he has a pretty good read that there's no Grasp of Darkness there, especially after that happened. Oh, yeah. Also, Julian passed the turn with all his mana. If I'm Seth, I'm thinking at least a Spell Queller is coming out here. Potentially more. I mean, it's hard to tell what Julian has as instants in his deck. He's playing four colors. You have no idea what could be going on over there. 
So Minorak Demon attacking uh, Tamiyo. Let's see what Julian has to say about that. Looks like Hardness Lightning will be taking down that uh, Pilgrim's Eye. And then a second Hardness Lightning generates enough energy to take down the Migrant Demon. That was a, that was a nice sequence of uh, Hardness Lightnings for Julian. Yeah, it was a shockingly good play. It ends up uh, using two mill spells for two creatures, but one of them is a Mind Rack Demon. Though the Pilgrims are replaced itself. So overall, Julian is down a card, but given the, how the, uh, Hetty is on board, I think that he's happy with that exchange. All right. Ishkana coming Julian down, though, for Seth will help uh, shore up the, the attackers. Uh, his and Quagmire coming down for him as well. The problem for Seth is that Tamiyo... I mean, she can start minusing at some point, too. If she minuses and taps down Ishkan on a spider, then Woodland Wonder and Spellcaller can both just get in there. And Woodland Wonder starts to become a pretty fast clock when uh, you, even when your opponent starts at 17. Magic players in the Modern Showcase, your pairings for round number four are now being posted. Again, pairings for round four of the Modern Showcase are now being posted. If you're Julian, do you think that a match like this favors you? I've liked how things have looked. I mean, it, Noxious Gearhulk did a real number on Julian in game one, but uh, th the way this game has played out, Seth's deck is soft to Tamiyo. Black Green, you know, ha has trouble with that card. I, I remember uh, in the in Pro Tour uh, Eldritch Moon, uh, we played Tamiyo in our band sideboard, and it was just fantastic against mm -hmm. Black Green. That was our best card against that in that matchup. So I think that uh, having access to that is really giving Julian an advantage here, and he has three in his main deck. I remember it was, uh, I forget exactly which match it was, but I was with Randy in the booth and we were taking a look at your guys' sideboard and you were in a game where you, it looked like there was no way you could possibly come back and then we were wondering what, what is the one thing that he could potentially draw to actually like pull this game out and like slam Tamiyo. Yeah, that was almost assuredly against Reed Duke when uh, yeah, I, I, think I beat multiple resolved Demercools that, that, that game thanks to Tamiyo. Tamiyo, it, it was a combination of, of Tamiyo, uh, Good play and insane amounts of luck. All right. <laughs> Mostly the third. Also the first. There was a little bit of the second, but... Looks like the, a the four mana and another <laughs> Woodland Wonder. This one's a yeah, little Yeah, th these Woodland Wonders just getting out of control. Like, this is now a four mana 6-6 six, six Trample Vigilance when Seth's already on the back foot here. Looks like the whole Spider crew uh, decided to block the Wanderer earlier. Does take down the Ishkana, but the baby spiders get to live. Tireless Tracker, uh, not exactly enough to get Seth back into the cards race against Tamiyo, but it's a start. Also, Traverse the Ulvenwald. It's going to be a nice one here as well. Seth might be in a position where he just gets Emrakul and just hopes to wait a turn to survive and then just hopes to, to go off with Emrakul next turn since he's got Creature, Instant, Land, Sorcery, and Artifact. So five types. And he's got seven lands in play. So if he plays an eighth land, he's just going to be able to play Emrakul. All right, so Julian is going to take down the tireless tracker. And he now knows he needs to get a little aggressive as he uh, has to plan for this Emrakul turn. So that's sitting at 17 life. He's not uh, under too much pressure. No, Julian will not be able to kill Seth this turn. Tamiya is a bit of a liability uh, on an Emrakul turn. Minusing Tamiya to tap two of Julian's creatures means that the extra turn he gets off Emrakul is just frequently not going to do very much. All right, so Julian has to sequence this in a way where he does not get absolutely destroyed uh, when Seth is able to play that Emrakul. Oh, Seth has the sixth type, actually. Liliana's in, in there oh, also. So, as well. so Seth can actually just cast Emrakul right now. All right, a tune with Aether, providing Julian with another land and a little bit more energy. It'd be sweet if Julian just got like a swamp here. Just didn't know no black card, just gets a swamp, <laughs> you know. Might as well. Yeah, d d just, just to sh you know, send a message here. It does help the Woodland Wanderers. It also makes your mana base a lot worse, so. <laughs> Woodland Wanderer getting in there. So that's just going to take the damage. It's to Seth's benefit to leave the most number of creatures in play because during Emrakul turns, the triple blocks are really effective because Seth can do something like triple block uh, your Spell Queller and, or, you know, or your Woodland Wanderer and have you assign damage in a way that's advantageous to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, casting Emrakul does create these interesting board positions where, you know, 
you're not always looking to see like what is the most damage it can make, right? You're always using your cards to the most advantage. So taking a look at it from that perspective is uh, interesting. All right, Emrakul coming down. <laughs> Julian's hand is six oh lands and a tune with either. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he has all his colors. Uh, if I were Seth before this, I would be thinking that Julian didn't want to play creatures into an Emrakul because he'd be worried about, uh, you know, me using them wrong. Yeah. But instead, it's like, nope, you just have six lands in a tune. It's not the situation where you're looking and you're like, well, what could they possibly have? They haven't played anything in so many turns. That's, yep. just, that's just my average seven card hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that or you just choose to keep hands like that in a, like... Let's, in let's a, not focus a, on the hands I keep. Let's just right. focus on the... <laughs> on the <laughs> we've, we've got a game to watch here. <laughs> so, besides making attacks here that, uh, you know, kill both of Julian's creatures, Emrakul can eat Woodland Wonder and the spider, one of the spiders can trade for Spell Queller, uh, Seth can just, he can just minus Tamiyo and leave Julian with all lands and a Tamiyo on three. That's not the, not the worst place to be. All right, so no board anymore for Julian. Seth also gets to look at Julian's deck if he wants with that Evolving Wild. He just chose, he chose to bin it. To. He just chose to bin it, but, yeah. I appreciate the, the just playing faster as opposed to looking through Julian's deck. Cause well, he's pretty far ahead at this point as well. Actually, <laughs> Julian doesn't have any lands to get with the tune. <laughs> oh, he does not? No, he's got, cause he's got one of each of the non-forest basics and four forests, and he's got four forests in, in, in play already, or between play and hand. Yeah. All right, well, Tag Brawler coming down for Julian. Uh, now he's facing Umrakul, a couple of spiders, and uh, the Tamiyo probably not long for this world either. No, the Tamiyo is going to buy Julian a turn here on that Emrakul, but next turn, uh, Emrakul is coming across. All right, so Murder takes on the Voltaic Brawler. The spider is enough to take down uh, that Tamiyo, and another Ish kind of coming back, making some more spiders. Julian draws. Hardness Lightning for the turn, and that's not enough. He extends the hand, and Seth Manfield takes this match. This improves them to a 5-0 and oh here at GP Providence. Julie was just a couple energy short of using Harness Lightning to kill Emrakul. A, a couple? Well, also, also it's an instant, so it wouldn't work. But, you know, other than <laughs> that, he almost got there. <laughs> Aside from the, like, it's very many things that, that do not work well in that statement. It, it would be nice to Harness Lightning and Emrakul. There are probably ways to do that that are just very complicated. Yeah. Seth Manfield looking as excited as ever for about winning his match. <laughs> All right, that'll do it here for round five at GP Providence. Kaladesh is now available on Magic Duels. Build endless deck combinations with more than 1,000 unique cards. Play through hours of story with 50 campaign missions. Play Magic Duels free today on Xbox One, Steam, iPad, and iPhone. Optimism, innovation, and the spirit of creativity fill these pages, lavishly illustrated with the award-winning art of Magic the Gathering. Welcome to Kaladesh, a vibrant, beautiful plane where anything is possible. Join the heroic planeswalkers of the Gatewatch as they explore the Inventor's Fair and let your imagination soar alongside thopters and airships crafted by the best artificers in the multiverse. Hello there, welcome back to coverage here at Grand Prix Providence. Marcel Cycliffe with J 